Friends, welcome to my workplace at Ranaghat, West Bengal, India. In this video, we are going to see how to manage a posterior capsular rent when the rent is small and vitreous has not prolapsed into the anterior chamber. This is my this is a routine case. Everything is fine. The nucleus is about grade four. And the nucleus is being divided into several fragments. This is the other heminucleus. It is also divided into two large fragments. And emulsification is started. The lens is a little leathery and anterior chamber stability appears little less. So I asked for laser vacuum. I started with 450 vacuum and I reduced it to about 400 vacuum. And everything is fine, appears fine now. And now see the emulsification of the last piece. At this time, the video is in slow motion, 50% of real speed. And here, this hard material in front above and soft material behind this is dangerous and particularly if the anterior chamber stability is not very good this can cause uh, something wrong and something wrong wrong probably has happened I am not sure whether something has happened or not but yes something wrong has happened however emulsification is done emulsification of the nuclear fragments are complete and there is a small rend right in front of the tip of the phaco needle so without coming out I asked my assistant to inject visco this is SPMC and then remove the so my take in this case is during emulsification of the last piece the hard material was above and soft epinucleus was below I mean the tip of the phaco needle was between the soft epinucleus and hard, epin hard nuclear material which was above and it caught the posterior capsule and the anterior chamber stability I checked it was not as good as in other days this rent is has happened in my hand probably after about six months or so and now this is dry aspiration I'm um, using a Simco cannula without irrigation this is a 23G Simco using without irrigation and aspirating all the cortex because if I use irrigation it is going to hydrate the vitreous and vitreous is going to come into the anterior chamber but if we don't use irrigation vitreous prolapse will not occur and here it is we have removed all the cortex and now what to do with the rent can we implant a lens in the capsular bag yes we can provide it we convert this small rent into a PCCC posterior continuous curvilinear capsular axis unless we do that if we try to implant a lens in the capsular bag the posterior capsule may get torn completely and the lens may drop in the vitreous cavity or you have to pull it out and place it in the sulcus so the best thing at this time is to try to convert this P posterior capsular rent into a PCCC and I am trying to do that it takes several attempts to hold the hold a tag of the posterior capsule and convert it into a PCCC and it is done so there is a small PCCC and 
I am ready to implant a lens in the capsular bag. So whatever lens was selected for this case according to the pain capability of the patient we can implant the same lens in this case. In this case that is a hydrophilic acrylic lens. I have enlarged the main wound because I am using a B cartridge and I want to deliver the lens going inside the eye. And here it is. I have to be very cautious. The chopper is behind the lens supporting the posterior surface of the intraocular lens waiting for the haptic to come out haptics comes out very gently and it goes in the equator of the capsular bag inferiorly at around 6 o'clock between 5 o'clock and 6 o'clock and the leading at uh, the trailing haptic is now placed in the bag and now still there is the leading haptic has probably not opened up completely that's why there is some the some tilt of the lens so I tap the lens and here it is the lens goes in the capsular bag and nicely centered there's no tilting of the lens so there is no vitreous prolapse the lens has gone into the capsular bag and now is the time to remove the visco as much as possible. In this case, very little amount of visco has gone into the capsular bag because the rent was very small. And I have decided to leave it like that. If I go behind and try to aspirate that visco, I'm going to hydrate the vitreous and vitreous will come out vitreous will tend to prolapse it will cause tilting of the lens I have to use vitrectomy carter and lot of other things so my plan in this case is my decision in this case is to remove visco as much as possible from the anterior chamber and from the from behind the iris from the anterior chamber angle as much as possible without going behind the eye well. This is irrigation and aspiration. Um, removing visco from the upper part from the remaining for some time so that some visco from the posterior chamber comes out from the periphery of the capsular bag some visco comes out this is moxifloxacin and now these side ports are to be closed corneal stroma on either side of these stab wounds are hydrated and these stab wounds get closed so whenever there is a small rent. It is better to prevent all rents, but when it has already occurred, we can convert the rent into a PCCC and implant a lens in the capsular bag. And we can leave a small amount of visco in the anterior vitreous. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills. Be a great surgeon and serve your patients with love, respect, empathy and great surgical competence.